In chapter four, we've been focusing on the essential question of why is it useful to write numbers in different ways? We've talked about scientific notation and exponents, and lesson four six talks about square roots and cube roots. And so we already have a little background knowledge on this because of our speed quizzes we've been doing uh, last chapter. But this chapter, this lesson will go pretty quick. There's just a few things we need to add to our notes about uh, square roots and cube roots. A square root of a number is one of its two equal factors. And if x squared equals y, then x is the square root of y. So the um, square root would be the opposite operation of squaring a number. So the one thing we did not talk about uh, when we were doing our speed quizzes is that there is this plus or minus sign. And, and if you think about it, the square root of 36 is 6, but it's also negative 6 because negative 6 times negative 6 is a positive 36, and 6 times 6 is a positive 36. Most often we ask for the principal square roots, okay, and the principal square root is the positive one. It's a positive answer. Uh, you can remember that with a P. But um, if they're asking for the square root of a number, you really do include both the positive and the negative number. So the principal square root is the positive one, okay? Going down to example one, the square root of 9 is 3. It says find the positive square root. So the positive square root would be 3. Find the negative square root. Um, negative uh, square root would be a negative 8. And in C, the square root of 4. The both square roots would be 4, uh, positive 2, and negative 2. And the square root of negative 81 would be uh, not possible because no number times itself will be equal to a negative 81. Go ahead and pause the video and try to do problems 1a through 1d on your own and then press play to check your answers. For 1a, uh, positive or negative 7, there should be a plus or minus sign in front of that um, indicating that both 7 and negative 7 are the square root of 49. On 1b, the square root is 4, but since that negative sign is out front, we're just going to attach that to our answer. And 1c, what is the square root of 100? It's a positive and negative 10. And then finally, 1d, you cannot find the square root of a negative 49 because uh, no number times itself would give you that negative number. Going on to the next page on 169, there is example two at the top. It says to estimate each square root. So we can have our perfect squares that we memorized and we can use a calculator as another strategy. And another uh, third strategy would be to estimate. So 33 on the number line falls somewhere between our perfect squares of five and six. And so it falls somewhere in between there and you can uh, simplify that and use a calculator to find the exact answer. So for letter B here, uh, 129 falls between the perfect squares of 11 and 12. And since it's a negative, we're going to put it between a negative 11 and a negative 12. So if we're going to put that on a number line, we'll just kind of estimate where that will belong. And then we can check using a calculator. Go ahead and pause the video and try to do 2A through 2D on your own and then press play to check your answers. For 2A, the square root of 60 would fall in between the perfect squares of uh, 49 and 81. Okay, so 60 falls somewhere in between there, and so um, the square root of 64 is 8. The square root of 14 falls somewhere in between the square root of 9 and the square root of 16, and it's closer to 4. And the square root of 23 is really close to the square root of 25, and in this case, negative, so it would be closest to negative 5. And then finally, the square root of 79 is closest to the square root of 81, which is about 9. So estimating is just finding that perfect square where each of those falls between, 
and then just estimating the answer. Of course, you can always check with a calculator. Next, on page 170, we're talking about uh, formulas that use the square root. In this case, distance equals 1.22 times the square root of h. And we're just substituting numbers into uh, this uh, equation there by putting in 520 in for the height of h. And then we can use a calculator to find that square root and then multiply by 1.22 to get the 27.8 answer. So about 27.8 miles. For 3a, we have a 55 foot fall. So we're going to use that same formula of d equals 1.22 times 55, sorry, the square root of 55. Okay, sorry, my handwriting here is a little crazy. Uh, 1.22 times the square root of 55 and then go ahead and use your calculator to multiply that out and you should get 9 miles. Okay, Doing the same thing with uh, the observation deck of the Washington Monument on 3B. It's 500 feet uh, high. Calculate how far a person on the observation deck can see on a clear day. Uh, round to the nearest tenth of a mile. So you're still using that same formula, just substituting in 500 for your uh, square root there. Next, uh, cube roots. This little screenshot right here is on your note sheet so you can look through that. A cube root of a number is one of three equal factors of the number. And the symbol for that is a square root sign but with a little three. And that can um, help you out. Uh, but you should have your a couple of the cubic <clears throat> roots memorized. If you know your cubic numbers, um, then you should have the inverse of that operation, the cube root of those numbers. So uh, let's practice a few of those on page 171. It says to look at the cube root of 343. Well, 7 cubed is 343, so the cube root of uh, 343 is 7. And then for B, why is there a negative sign underneath the radical sign? Just think about that for a second. I thought we couldn't take the root of a negative number. Well, in this case, negative 9 times negative 9 times negative 9 would give us a negative 729. Okay? So, for 4a, 64. Remember what number times itself 3 times gave you 64? Hopefully you do. 4 times 4 times 4 is 64. So the cube root of 64 is 4. Okay. What you may not know is uh, 1,331. And so you can just start guessing and checking numbers. Okay. In my case, I'm thinking, well, 10 cubed is 1,000, so it has to be bigger than 10. If I take 11 cubed, I get 1,331. But in this case, it's a negative 1,331. So it would be a negative 11 for the uh, cubic root. And you can also estimate using those perfect cubes you have memorized. So just refresher, 1 cubed is equal to 1 times 1 times 1, which is 1. 2 cubed is 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. 3 cubed is 3 times 3 times 3, which is 27, and so on. So you can estimate those just like you did the uh, perfect squares too. So for example, 5, it's asking for where does 72 fall? Well, it's going to come up here with 4, four cubed is 64. And then 5 cubed is 5 times 5 times 5, which is 125. So 74, sorry, 72 fits somewhere in between 4 and 5. It's actually closer to 4. So if I turn my answers on there, it's about 4. And then 2024 falls uh, between uh, 13 and, let's see here, what's 14 cubed? 14 cubed is 2744, and 13 cubed is 29, uh, 2197, and 12 cubed is 1728. So it's definitely closer to that 13 number. So. Using a calculator definitely helps. Uh, estimating also works. And then when you have those uh, perfect squares and perfect cubes memorized, it makes things go a little bit quicker. So 
Uh, you have a brain pot video on square roots and you also have some IXL lessons that you need to complete at 100% accuracy. Level J, lesson F14, F is in Frank, and level K, lesson A7, and then don't forget your five-point online quiz and send that screenshot to me as well.